See her rose. For years I've prayed and contemplated what I sought in a woman. In reflection, I have always known my bride will be someone remarkable, someone capable of wondrous feats, who I can love, support, and God willing, create a blossoming family with. In preparing these vows to you, I've seen many examples where men write what they feel called to, what words they ascribe to their soon-to-be wife. As I know our love is to last forever, anyone who will ask me who my wife is, I will forever respond, she's the woman from Proverbs, chapter 31, verse 10. When I first met you, my heart was a flutter. Taken aback with the natural beauty the Lord has blessed you with, our first few dates we dabbled in philosophy, post-tribulation theory, and you showed your fortitude as a woman of conviction and incredible intellect. As I learned more about you, we delved further into our ambitions and dreams, sharing our desire to have a large family, to serve the Lord in a community we know and love, and to explore as much of this planet which God has created. I vow to always love you, to cherish you, and to all the ends of this earth, and with the Lord as my witness, I promise to always sing your praises as my wife, the deepest love of my mortal life. From the day we first met, I already knew that you were the most complex, considerate, and generous person that I'd ever encountered. After hours of phone calls and texts, I knew that you were someone that I wanted to and needed to spend a lengthy time getting to know. And after you met Paddington, my family's dog, and he immediately gave his stamp of approval, which is really hard to come by, I knew that you were a keeper. I love how intentional you are in making sure that I feel loved and cherished how generous you are with other people and with animals in distress, and your intellect and big picture thinking about how we can make a positive difference in the world together. You're my true love, my soulmate, and I thank God that he brought you into my life. In the words of a poet, I was made and meant to look for you and wait for you and become yours forever. I feel like our souls danced from the moment we met and I believe they'll continue to dance together for eternity. You are my every dream come true. I love you to the moon and back, and I can't wait to build a life with you. On behalf of Nicholas, Sierra, and their families, we just want to welcome you. Thank you for coming as we celebrate their lives being joined together today is husband and wife, an awesome thing, amen? And something that we've been waiting for for quite some time now. We've gathered together here in the sight of God and in the presence of these witnesses to join together Nicholas and Sierra in Christian marriage. We stand in the presence of God and we ask him to join this husband, this couple together as husband and wife and release his divine blessing on them, their family, their lives, and their future, and on this occasion. Can we say amen together? Amen. As we look at the rings, I first want you to see that they are an outward and visible symbol to all who see them and you who wear them, that you have given your heart and love to another, the special person that God has brought into your life. I also want you to notice the symbolisms of these rings, that they are made of precious metal, representing purity, as you're devoting yourselves to each other alone. There is no one else. They also are a perfect circle, representing completeness as you complete one another. I announce that God has made you husband and wife. You are now one together. Nicholas, you may kiss your bride. <laughs> back to Romans 15 5. May the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to live in such harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus. Amen. And that is my prayer and wish for your union together. 
Sierra and Nick, as you go forward from this place, my prayer is this, that you continue to be generous with one another and to always put your hope in God, whose grace is the source and sustainer of this generosity. And finally, um, in the words of T.S. Eliot, this is not farewell to a season, but fair forward to a new beginning. So to Sierra and Nick, I had to. I had to paint a work picture. Uh, Sarah left the coast of Japan, yeah. and Nick left the coast of Seattle, and in kayaks, and they went through trials and tribulations, and rough waters, sharks, all kinds of things like that, and somehow. Jesus brought them together in Hawaii. They landed on the same beach side by side. And this is what we kept. So I'd like to raise a glass to Mr. and Mrs. Mal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> kind of think of it like planting a new garden, because I love to garden and grow vegetables and flowers. But um, the seeds of hope and joy fellowship and friendship and also tough times and learning and forgiveness and growing and um, this garden that you are planting is going to have many many seeds but overall each season keeps getting better with each learn with each season so I just want to say that we're here for you always we've got you we're surrounding you It's amazing 